I'd like to begin my sermon with a quote from Rich Mullins. Unfortunately, I can't sing it because the bots at YouTube will flag it and it will not be a part of my sermon. So here we go. Saints and children, we are gathered here to hear the sacred story. And I'll gladly bring it to you with my best rhyming and rhythm. Because I know the thirsty listen and down to the water come. And the Holy King of Israel loves me here in America. And if you listen to my songs, I hope you'll hear the water falling. I hope you feel the oceans crashing off the coast of North New England. I wish I could be there just to see them. Two summers past, I was. And the Holy King of Israel loves me here in America. Saints and children, we have gathered here to hear the sacred story. The story of the one known as Jesus Christ. Many words have been written about him. Many songs have been sung in his name. The knowledge of Jesus cannot be contained nor fully understood by any mortal. And yet we try. We try to absorb a verse, perhaps a chapter, of the sacred story. We try to catch a glimpse of the big picture. And that is why you tune in here every Sunday to understand and to share, to quench our thirst with the word of God, to hear the baptismal waters flow through our lives, reminding us of who we are as well as whose we are, to remind us of the fact that Jesus loves us even here in an obscure corner of the universe known as the United States of America. Well, today we turn to a particular portion of the sacred story, a portion from the Gospel of Mark which tells us of an important battle, a battle between Jesus and a demon, which occurred at the very start of his ministry. Now, I know that most of you are skeptical about the existence of demons, but I'm here to tell you that a pointy tail and horns does not a demon make. They take on much subtler forms in this day and age, forms with familiar faces such as depression and addiction, self-hatred and abuse, Forms with familiar names such as despair, hopelessness, anger, violence, prejudice, fear, doubt. Yes, demons are real. And if for some reason you should doubt this truth, listen to the story of an encounter Jesus had with a demon. He thought demons were real. He took them seriously. And from this we can learn about the power we have to break free from the demons that sometimes make our lives a living hell. But first, the story. Mark tells us that shortly after Jesus called his first disciples, they all went to Capernaum. And when Sabbath time had come, Jesus went to the synagogue like a good Jewish boy to pray and to teach. And all those who had gathered around him were astonished by his teaching. His words seemed to have power, authority, it was unlike anything they had ever heard before. Our gospel lesson puts it this way. They were surprised at his teaching, so forthright, so confident, not quibbling and quoting like the religion scholars. In the middle of his teaching, Jesus was interrupted by the voice of a man whom our gospel lesson says was deeply disturbed. This is a bit of an understatement to say the least. The NRSV and NASB say he had an unclean spirit. The NIV and CEB say he had an evil spirit. The Worldwide English Translation says he had a bad spirit, which is sort of the equivalent of a 300-pound biker demon in an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. In short, the man had a demon inside of him, and this demon began to yell, saying, What have you... Excuse me, what business do you have here with us, Jesus? Nazarene, I know what you're up to. You're the Holy One of God, and you've come to destroy us. I think it's interesting to note that the demon speaks in the plural rather than the singular. It's sort of like Gollum in the movie Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, where Gollum seems to be struggling with a bit of demon possession himself as he bounces back and forth from personality to personality. And in this time and in these conversations, he always refers to himself as us and we. What business have you 
here with us, Jesus. It appeared that the man in the story was not only tormented by one demon, but by several demons simultaneously. He was a conflicted man, to say the least, wrestling with the dark side of himself and not having much success. Well, Jesus looked up at the tormented man, stared into his eyes, and silenced his unclean spirit with a single command, quiet, get out of him. You might be interested to know that Jesus' command in the original Greek can be literally translated as be muzzled, be gagged, and come out of him. It's as if the demon was a vicious, rabid dog that needed to be put to sleep because they were of no good to anyone. Our gospel lesson says that the afflicting spirit threw the man into spasms, protesting loudly, and got out. And the people who witnessed this display of Jesus' power were amazed. They kept asking each other, what's going on here? A new teaching that does what it says? Jesus shuts up defiling demonic spirits and sends them packing. And people talked about that event for a long time. And soon word spread throughout the region surrounding Galilee that a new teacher was in town. Jesus of Nazareth, man of power and authority, slayer of demons with a single spoken phrase, quiet, get out of him. This encounter of Jesus with demons is not an isolated event in the New Testament. In fact, the Gospels tell us many stories about Jesus' power over demonic forces. That same power is available to all of us today. It was never meant to be confined to the pages of the Bible. Jesus' power to cast out demons is just as real today as it was in his time. All we need to do is ask for it, to place our lives as well as our demons in his hands and trust that Jesus will bring about healing and restoration. When we call on his name, Jesus speaks the word, quiet, get out of him, and our demons are driven away by the power of Christ's love. Usually this exorcism of our personal demons doesn't occur instantaneously like it does in the scriptures, and sometimes it requires a therapist or a counselor to lend a hand. But with time and love, I believe we can be healed. We can be set free from our personal dreamings, demons. We can be set free from depression and addiction from the pain of abuse and self-hatred and any other demon that makes our lives a living hell. Jesus is more than king of the glories of our lives, all the good times. He is more than just a celebrator of everything right that is going well in our lives. He is also our prince of peace, the slayer of demons with a single phrase, quiet, get out of him. Again, I turn to the words of Rich Mullins. Sometimes my life just don't make sense at all. When the mountains look so big and my faith just seems so small. So hold me, Jesus, because I'm shaking like a leaf. You have been my king of glory. Won't you be my prince of peace? And I wake up in the night and feel the dark. It's so hot inside my soul. I swear there must be blisters on my heart. So hold me, Jesus, because I'm shaking like a leaf. You have been my king of glory. Won't you be my prince of peace? Surrender don't come natural to me. I'd rather fight you for something I don't really want than take what you give that I need. And I've beat my head against so many walls. Now I'm falling down, falling on my knees. And the Salvation Army Band's playing this hymn. And your grace rings out so deep, it makes my resistance seem so thin. So hold me, Jesus, because I'm shaking like a leaf. You have been my king of glory. Won't you be my prince of peace? Quiet. Get out of him. These are the words that are offered to us today. They are words of power, words of freedom, words of healing and wholeness. For those of us who have experienced the power of demon in our lives, they are words of hope. They are the good news of Jesus Christ. The good news that our God is a God who loves and cares for us, who seeks our wholeness and health, 
who speaks words of healing rather than words of condemnation. Our God is a God who opposes unclean spirits and demons, those forces which seek to alienate us from others, those forces which seek to cripple us physically, socially, mentally, and spiritually. Today, I offer these words of hope from the sacred story, and it is my prayer that they will bring us much joy, that they will bring us healing and wholeness. Jesus' power to cast out demons is available to us today. May we call upon him and trust him to deliver us from those unclean spirits that make our lives a living hell. And may we, in turn, be a force of healing in the lives of others. Amen.